Before we get into how molecular orbital theory affects color, I thought I'd do a, a quick video to remind you about simple color theory. So here we have the different colors of the visible spectrum. And we know that the visible spectrum occupies a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And so the, the starting wavelength for the visible spectrum, so for violet light, starts at approximately 400 nanometers. And the visible spectrum goes all the way through the end of red light, approximately 700 nanometers. So if the wavelength is, is beyond red, we're into the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum, which we can't see. And if we are beyond violet, over here on the left, we're in the ultraviolet region, which we also can't see. The first person to show that white light consists of all of the colors of the visible spectrum was Isaac Newton. And in his famous experiment, he put white light through a prism, and he was able to observe all the colors of the rainbow. Isaac Newton actually uh, included indigo uh, to give him seven colors for the rainbow because he preferred the, the number seven to six. I have put it down to six colors here to make it easier for us to see our color wheel. The way to make a color wheel, of course, would be to take the violet and move it this way, and take the red and move it this way, and to connect the violet and the red like that, and, and keeping all of the other colors in order, you make a color wheel. Color wheels are extremely useful because they allow you to identify the complementary colors very easily. For example, if you want to know the complementary color for red, all you have to do is look across the color wheel and you can see that it's green. If you want to know the complementary color to purple, just look over here and you can see that it's yellow. And then of course, finally, the complementary color to blue will be orange. So understanding these, these, simple, these simple relationships of colors uh, will help you to understand simple color theory. For example, if we, if we want to know why we perceive this object as being orange, we need to think about the white light that's striking that orange object. And we know that white light consists of all of the colors of the rainbow. We can simplify this by saying, OK, the colors on the left side of the color wheel are mostly in the blue family. And we can say that the colors on the right side of the color wheel are mostly in the orange family. So we can think about white light as consisting of two colors, two complementary colors, orange and blue. And so if I wanted to show white light striking my orange object, I could show, I could so, show orange and blue waves striking that object. And so I'm going to start with an orange wave. And so here, I, here I'm showing an orange orange wave hitting hitting the surface of my object like that. And I'm also going to include a blue wave, right? So I'm going to, to make the wavelengths very small on this because I know that blue has a smaller wavelength than orange. And so that is also going to strike the surface of my orange paper. And so these two things together uh, will, will approximate white light. The molecules in the orange sheet of paper are going to absorb the blue wavelengths of light and therefore reflect the orange wavelength. Okay, so, so the molecules in the paper are going to absorb only the blue, and therefore the orange will not be absorbed. They will be reflected, and so they're going to leave like that. And then if your eye happens to be right here, your brain will perceive that object as being orange. And so that's, that's just, again, an, an oversimplified way to think about color. You absorb uh, wavelengths of light of one complementary color, and, and you reflect the wavelengths of another complementary color, and that is what you see as the color of the object. Unfortunately, most organic molecules absorb wavelengths in the UV region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, you're not going to see any color at all for most organic molecules. The trick to getting color is to conjugate the molecule, and that's where molecular orbitals come in, and that is what we're going to examine in the next video.